What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. Today what we're gonna do is continue our look at the entire cryptocurrency market through the lens of Bitcoin. The reason we look at Bitcoin is because in general, Bitcoin is the market driver. So whether you're invested in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or you're all into altcoins, understanding what's going on with Bitcoin is generally advantageous to you. The reason that we look at Bitcoin beyond the fact that it is essentially the market driver is the fact that we have more data for Bitcoin than any other asset. We have more on-chain data. We have more price data. This allows us to essentially perform better analysis on Bitcoin than we can on any other asset. Okay, so today what we'll be looking at is the supply of Bitcoin and the last time that it moved. So specifically, we'll be looking at coins that last moved one year or greater. Now, why are we doing that? A very cyclical pattern occurs if you go back and look at the price history. Okay, so when we are in bear markets, the number of coins that last moved one year ago tends to rise. Okay, and if you don't want to think of it as a bear market, you can think of it as a reaccumulation phase. So long-term holders and new long-term holders are acquiring the asset or have acquired the asset one year or greater and have decided that whatever the prices are at right now are too low to justify them selling the asset that they've accrued. Conversely, what we see into bull markets is the number of coins that last moved within the last year, that number begins to fall. So the percentage that have last moved one year or greater. So we're going to look at those trends and identify where we're at now and what the implications of where we're currently sitting at may be. So what you notice is as the price is moving up into the bull market, the number of long-term holders are continuing to increase. Essentially the percentage of the asset that last moved on chain was increasing over time until we got to around here, right? So right here in January of 2013, we begin to sell the asset. The asset begins to sell off, right? So you see right here at around a price of $17 for Bitcoin, the number of coins that have been sitting for one year or more begins to dramatically fall. And this essentially continues to fall all the way until here in March of 2014. At that time in March of 2014, we were heading into a bear market that would eventually last about a year and a half going from December of 2013 all the way through around about here in uh, August of 2015. So about a year and a half, a year and three quarters actually. We began a reaccumulation phase. And you notice that right around here in March of 2014, the number of coins that have been sitting for one year or more begins to dramatically rise and it just continues to rise all the way into essentially here. You know, we got up to around 60% of the supply that had not moved within a year. And that just continues to rise until we start to make this turnaround in the market. So right after August of 2015, the market begins to turn around the price starts to head up and notice that this trend continues of an increasing number of coins that have not moved until it essentially flattens off right around here in the middle of or the beginning of 2016 it flattens off and notice where it begins to rapidly descend so in other words old coins at least one year or older moving this happens right around here in May of 2017, you know, May or April. What is unique about April or May? And that's the fact that that is the point where we got back to our prior all-time high. And this is a consistent theme that you see. Right when you get to a prior all-time high in every market cycle that we have seen, we've seen a defined characteristic, and that is long-term holders begin to take profits. It doesn't mean, I think people mischaracterize what I'm saying when I say this. And you know, when we call them smart money, it's they're smart money because they're holding for longer than the retail market is. The retail market is scared to buy here. They, they won't do it. In fact, they do the opposite. They capitulate when you get down to these lower prices. It's not to say long-term holders don't either, but in general, you see the retail market 
less willing to buy the asset as you're going into price weakness. Because convincing individuals that dollar cost averaging into a market that's falling is a very difficult thing to do. And, you know, it, it's, it, and I think there's several reasons for this. If you're a super high net worth investor and, you know, you have invested, let's say, some small percentage of your portfolio into Bitcoin, it's not a big deal to you to watch, you know, this, uh, this value of it go down over a few years. You, you might invest into Bitcoin back in 2014 and not look at it ever again, you know, until three years later and not even think about it in the meantime. And you have lots of capital, you have, you know, you're not worrying about how this investment getting crushed is affecting you financially. But if you're a smaller investor, you know, it's understandable how it's very likely that anything that you're investing in is going to be a larger percentage of your total net worth than if you're a much wealthier investor. So in that regard, it, you know, the fear is more understandable. But, you know, truly, you have to realize the fact that when the prices are down at these lower levels, notice what the long term holders are doing. They are just sitting on the asset and they're doing it increasingly so each time that we get down to these levels. So again, here in 2018, there's selling going on. And this rapidly begins once we get back to our prior all time high around here in, you know, we, we made our prior all time high in December of 2013. And then we begin selling once we get back to that level in 2018. Then we sell all the way through the end of the market cycle. The end of the market cycle comes in December. We sell all the way through that. It levels off down here at around 41%. And then we begin a second reaccumulation phase. One thing you should recall here, we got to around 61% of the total supply sitting at around a year or more. Okay, then we went down all the way down to 41%. So then we begin our next reaccumulation and notice this just increases increases all through the bear market. We go through 2019. There's a small sell off at this mini bull run that we had in 2019. There's a small sell off right here. Then you see a huge increase right here, December of 2019. And now why is that? Why is there such a, a sharp, sudden increase in 2019? And that's because the individuals, the savvy investors, in fact, you could even say the savviest investors that bought tons of Bitcoin right here. Some individuals bought tons of Bitcoin right here as the price plummeted nearly 50% in just a few days in the end of 2018. So when we went from around $6,500 all the way down to around $3,500, a ton of Bitcoin were bought. Okay, and you see that right here. Look at all of these coins that aged one year exactly from this date here. And that means that they, they bought those and, and didn't sell into the 2019 market because they aged one year right here at the end of December of 2019. Then we continue on, we get all the way up to another point where we reach around 60% of the total supply is one year or more since the last time it moved. Now notice that's almost the exact spot that we got to back in 2018. Once we got back up to this 60% of the supply has been sitting around for a year. So you run into a supply and demand issue. Supply is simply not enough to meet demand when you get down to these places where, or when, rather when you get up to these places where you're approaching 60% of the supply hasn't moved for an entire year. It's just sitting in cold storage wallets. Now, what you see again is we've come down into this valley and notice what's happened. So we'll just zoom in now. We have actually bottomed out and this is moving back up. And in fact, right now, we are sitting at a, at a point of around 60%. Okay, so we are at around the same place where we were back in 2018. We are almost at that exact same place. Now, what happened when we got to 60% in the, you know, the market cycle leading into 2020? And that was right around the time when the COVID capitulation event occurred. And from there, we just began to go up. This, in my opinion, is a rather 
bullish indicator, not necessarily in the short term, because notice you you tend to be in a downtrend even while this is moving up for some time. So it's not to say that we necessarily have to go up immediately, but this does indicate to me that your long term holders are taking back control of the market. Sort of uh, there's more bearish sentiment. Your retail market is gone. There's a reason that um, you know, when people lose interest in the asset, there's that tends to be the best time. And that's because you have, in general, a more informed investor, not a speculative investor, someone who's going to, you know, buy a few Bitcoin and then sell it to chase another pump and then sell that pump to chase another pump and then, you know, et cetera. So these tend to be times when less informed investors are in the market okay so you can think of these as market inefficiencies because you know if you think about a fair value or a fundamental value the definition of these terms indicates that you have market participants that are well informed about the asset that they are investing in you know etc they're they're very academic t terms fundamental or fair market value but nonetheless, I think the general principle applies. You have informed investors who understand the value of what they're investing in, and therefore they can make better decisions about that investment. Whereas when you have these rapid um, parabolic phases of the cycle, you have people that have no clue coming in. You know, people that have just heard about Bitcoin within the last couple of weeks, and they just want to chase the pump that they're hearing about on the news. So. These are can be considered more um, more inefficient markets. And then we fall back down to, you know, perhaps a fundamental value or a fair market value of the asset. And that's when you see the long term holders buying when the retail market is gone, when no one's interested, when the price is falling. And historically, historically, these have been where the profits exist. The profits don't exist if you come into the market when the bull market is going on the risk to reward value becomes very high so you're taking a huge risk with very little reward in general you know the price can still go up but if you came into the market you know a lot of people i think april was the time when most people came into the market there's a reason that the market crashed in may it's not coincidental so that's why you know, this was such a good opportunity. And again, what happened? What's the common theme? Retail had left the market at this time. There was not much retail market back in uh, May through uh, July. Likewise, since November, retail market got a small interest back in the market, you know, going into November. And what's the consistent theme? They come in at the worst time to come in and they leave at the worst time to leave. So don't be the retail guy. And if you're watching this, you're probably not the retail guy. You're probably becoming, you know, or already are the smart money. And that's the goal here. We want to think like these guys, the long term holders. We don't want to think like these guys, the short term holders, the come in and buy from the long term holders. OK, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you guys like this type of content, hit like and subscribe. And until next time, as usual, see you.